Good evening, ladies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, while our team is getting the stage ready, <coughs> I'd like to uh, relate to you a quick little story, and I hope that you will bear with me. You see, in 1991, I graduated from the then Natal University, our what is now known as the University of KwaZulu Natal. And upon graduation, I was posted to a, a high school in Newcastle, KwaZulu Natal, to teach mathematics. I had a mother who was terminally ill with cancer, and I needed to return to Peter Maritzburg, my hometown. But the Indian education of department at the time, so it was prior to 1994, did not want to transfer me. So I resigned, knowing full well that I could never teach in the in Indian education department again. And it did, not, it did not bother me all that much. Because what I did is I sought a music teaching position in the then black education department and applied for a position at a high school in Amlazi. It was called Zweli Banzi High School located in J section of Amlazi. Now keep in mind around 91, 92, this was the peak of the political violence between the ANC and the IFP. Amlazi was a no-go zone. But I chose to take this position for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to teach music, not mathematics. And two, it would bring me closer to home. When I interviewed for this position in Amlazi, the principal, Mr. Becky M. Tabela, interviewed me and he only had one question. He says, we have 1,200 students at the school and I want every one of them to study music. Can you do it? I needed the job. I said, yes, I can do it. So I took the job and I got the position of the first music teacher at Zweli Banzi High School. At that point, I asked Mr. M. Tabela, I said, you know, if I'm going to teach these kids music, I'm going to need some instruments. So he says, no problem. I'm going to get you a piano. So I said, man, that'll be fantastic. He says, you can start with the piano, and then we'll see what happens. So I anxiously waited for the arrival of this piano. And a few days later, some of the metric students, the, high school, the grade 12 students, and one of the teachers loaded a piano in the bucky and they brought it to the school. The piano was an upright piano that could not stand upright. It tilted to one end because a big chunk of the piano was missing on the corner. The piano also did not have any keys to the left-hand side of the piano beyond middle C. <laughs> so all of these keys were missing. Truth be told, this piano should only be an, of use for somebody making a fire but it was all that I got. And I made a promise to the principal, yes, I will teach piano. The problems did not stop there. I did not have a classroom. And the principal was fearful that the piano will get stolen from the school. So the piano was kept in the staff room where the teachers had their lunch and they would gather because it had steel gates. 
I did not have a regular music lesson. The principal told me, you're going to have to teach during the lunch break, in the mornings, and maybe after school. And then he changed his mind and said, well, you cannot teach in the mornings because the kids have to clean the school. Now, if any of you have been to the black schools in the townships, you'll realize the first thing the kids do is they get to school at about 6.30 in the morning. They clean the school, which is sweeping, the restrooms, the gardening. Then we gather for assembly at about 7, 7.15, and we sing in four-part harmony. And then classes start at about 8. So I could not teach in the morning. So I decided I'm going to teach all of the standard eight, the grade six, um, grade six students. Uh, standard six, the grade eight students. But there were about 140 to 150 of them. So I had to figure out a way to teach piano. So I took them in group lessons. I took these kids about groups of about 15 to 20 and taught piano to this group of 20 to 30, uh, 15 to 20 kids standing behind me while I demonstrated on the upper hand of the piano keyboard what they should be doing. So the lessons were not the best, but they worked because I could get to 15 kids in a lesson. The big challenge was getting the kids to practice. So with about 140 to 150 kids, you're not going to be able to practice an hour a day. So I figured out a schedule where each kid got 10 minutes on the piano per week. And if that kid missed that lesson, that practice time, he had to wait for the following week. Four years later, I was still at Zweli Banzi High School. But I had figured things out. The piano lessons were kind of still going, but I approached the Natal Philharmonic. At the time, it was known as Natal Philharmonic. It's of the KwaZulu Natal Philharmonic. And I told him I needed a donation of melodicas. So if you don't know what a melodica is, a melodica is a, it's a keyboard instrument that you blow into. So it's kind of like an accordion, but it's only got about an octave and a half. And I told them, I need these melodicas, but it must have the extension pipe, because these melodicas could come with a pipe, you blew into it, and you could play. So I put the melodicas on the table and the kids were able to practice piano. Four years after I had been there, we had melodic ensembles, we had some budding pianists, we still had the half piano, we had record ensembles. In all my 25 years of teaching, I had never come across more dedicated students. They would not let a single day go by without practicing or playing in an ensemble. So you may be asking yourself, why am I relating this story? For a few reasons. One, that the challenges that those kids faced at that school, learning to play the piano, is no different from the challenges many of our kids are facing in our country today. There are no pianos, there are no melodicas, especially if you go out into the rural areas. But kids are eager to study. They're eager to study music, which is why I am so glad that UNISA supports our community engagement project. Two. Many of the candidates and our shadow jury members still face similar challenges to becoming accomplished pianists. It may not be half a piano or 10 minutes of practicing, but they still have extreme challenges with funding, 
with family members who are dealing with health and other issues, with access to practice rooms. And a good example is our shadow jury. I was devastated to learn on, I think it was one Sunday, on Sunday my staff told me, you know, we have one shadow jury member who was traveling from Mpumalanga to UNISA every day, one and a half hours to one hour, 50 minutes by taxi to be on our shadow jury and then riding back to Mpumalanga. That's the level of dedication that we had at this competition. I know several of the pianists, classical and jazz pianists who performed. I've known, known them for many years. I know that there are some students who still do not have access to regular pianos to practice. They still face challenges. In fact, most of them face challenges with funding, which is why I am truly, truly grateful that UNISA supports this kind of an event that allows all of these students to participate without any costs to them to be able to perform on the stage for an audience like you, for our jury members, and to potentially take home prize money that could tremendously assist them. So to all of our candidates, I am truly, truly admirable for your dedication. I know as a student and as a practicing musician, it is not easy. Getting up on the stage for the past week was no simple task for you. In fact, many of you faced tremendous obstacles, traveled great distances, and made tremendous sacrifices. And it was not just this week, but those sacrifices have been going on for years. So I salute you, every single one of our candidates who performed, whether you win a prize or not. Your dedication is certainly admirable. I would like to move on to the presentation of awards. And at this point, I'd like to invite our registrar, Dr. Farun Gulam, our jury members, our four finalists, and Andre Briet and Tiboho Kubedi to join me on stage. <laughs> Folks, while they are coming up, I'm going to I'm going to take the liberty to introduce Dr. Farun Gulam to you. This is Dr. Gulam's first um, national competition. Dr. Gulam joined UNISA, I think it was the first week or the second week of November last year. And about two weeks later, we were, uh, we were hosting our scholarship competition. So many of you may know our scholarship competition for grade eight students. And my staff told me we should invite Dr. Gulam. And at first I was hesitant. I said, you know, he's just arrived at UNISA. The registrar's portfolio is extremely, extremely taxing. This is a man who does not have any time I'm reluctant, but nevertheless, let's send this invitation out. We sent the invitation out, and immediately we got a response saying, I'll be there. And he was. And immediately, I knew, and my staff knew, we have a tremendous supporter that is leading us. We're sincerely grateful to have Dr. Gulam as our line manager. 
on a daily basis, he challenges us to live up to UNISA's core values, to constantly rethink what we are doing, how we are doing it, how we can be more effective. So we are sincerely grateful, Dr. Gulam, that you can join us this evening and be a part of the jury, uh, a part of the award ceremony. Our jury members need very little introduction. I'm going to ask them to stand as I call their names. First up from Durban, Mr. Melvin Peters. <laughs> Burton Naidu. <laughs> Induduzo Makatini. <laughs> Andrew Lilly. <laughs> Bokani Daya. Elna van der Merwe, <laughs> Nina Schumann, <laughs> Ben Schumann, <laughs> Megan Jeffrey Prince, <laughs> and Catherine Foxcroft. <laughs> Folks, as you can see, we have an outstanding jury panel and I certainly value their opinions equally. Well, kind of, almost. There's one panel member who's a little more special to me than the others. I'm guess, you're guessing who, right? That's Nduduzo Makatini. Why? Because he comes from the greatest city in South Africa, Peter Maritzburg, my home country, <laughs> my hometown. Jokes aside, folks, I'd like to round up with our four finalists and our two special prize winners. Um, in the order that they seated, it would be Willem de Beer, <laughs> Tabiso Mfana, <laughs> and Tando Kapu. Lizanti van Sittert. <laughs> they would not be on the stage if they were not taking home some kind of a prize. Andre Briet. <laughs> and Tebojo Kobedi. <laughs> One of the hallmarks of UNISA competitions is our shadow jury. It's a jury that's made up of young pianists young artists that we bring from around the area to shadow our professional jury, take lessons, take master classes, which they have been doing throughout this week, in the hopes that they will grow and they will develop. In fact, two of the people on the stage, Tebojo Kobedi and Lizanti van Sittert, were shadow jury members at our last national and international competition. So at this point, I'd like to recognize our shadow jury, and I'm going to ask them to stand and remain standing the shadow jury was led by Letitia Orlandi. Letitia. <laughs> and the, the jury was comprised of Ruxne Scooter, Rene Scooter, <laughs> Zakes Mashlangu, Mohao Malachi, <laughs> Emil Vermeulen, <laughs> and Lucky Morwe. <laughs> so it seems like they are not in the hall. That's probably because they are still voting. But nevertheless, we do want to recognize all of them. At this point, I would like to call upon Dr. Gulam to rise as he will present prizes to the special prize winners. I would like to ask the special prize winners to please proceed first to Dr. Gulam, and on your way back, the jury would like to show their appreciation to you as well. 
The winner of the best performance of a Baroque or virtuoso work in the first round was Willem de Beer. The winner of the best performance of an up-tempo jazz standard or jazz ballad in the first round, Entando Trapo. The winner of the best performance of a sonata or South African work in the second round classical category, Willem de Beer. The winner of the best performance of a Latin American standard or South African jazz work in the second round is Tabiso Mfana. The following prizes were voted for by the shadow jury. The most promising semi-finalist in the classical category who did not go through to the final round is Andre Breit. The most promising semi-finalist in the jazz category who did not go through to the final round is Tebojo Kobedi. We tried to do this a little earlier. We're going to take a break because suspense is always good. Before we announce the finalists, I'd like to call Alet Fenter up on stage, please. Alet. <laughs> Folks, as mentioned earlier, Alet has been the bedrock of our competitions, our concerts for pretty much everything we've done in the Music Foundation for a very, very long time. We would not have managed without Alet. And if there was no addition to the family, I'm sure Alet would still have been here. So Alet, sincerest thanks for everything you've done for us 
It will always be a place for you at the Music Foundation. Thank you so much. At this point, I'd like to call Brian Wallach up onto the stage, please. While Brian Wallach is coming onto stage, ladies and gentlemen, each semi-finalist receives an incentive prize of 3,000 Rand as well. So at the start of the competition, Brian came up to us and said, I'd like to make an announcement. Here's your moment. Make your announcement, Brian. Good evening. I didn't think I said I'd make an announcement. It's a big one. Anyway, I just told Karinder that I would uh, be very happy to offer a tour to the winner uh, next year, whenever the schedule suits whoever wins, uh, to play a concert here in South Africa. And a nice opportunity for the South African public to get to know these young artists. And I'll be happy to arrange this tour for whoever wins. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. So if those of you did not catch that, the winner of the classical category is also going to get a national tour as part of your winnings. For the jazz candidate, the Music Foundation will figure out a way to get you on a stage somewhere. Believe me, we will. So we make a commitment to whoever wins the jazz category that we will feature you at some point, somewhere in the year. We'll figure that out. Folks, it's about time to announce the winners of the main, the main category prize winners. It is very, very important to keep in mind that the winners were not judged purely on their performance tonight. Our competition rules stipulate that the judges must judge based on cumulative scores, which means performances from every round counts towards the individual who is going to win. It is not just tonight. The jazz category. The second prize winner is Ntando Kapo. The first prize winner of the jazz category is Tabiso Mfana. The second prize winner of the classical category, Lizanti van Sittert.
the first prize winner of the classical category, Willem de Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I would like to call upon Dr. Faroon Ghulam, the Registrar of the University, to deliver the congratulatory address. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my first exposure to UNISA idols, and, <laughs> and I, I found it quite thrilling, actually. Um, ladies and gentlemen, invited guests, our two council members here with us today, Ms. Mokoka and Mr. Lebesi, if you're still here. Um, colleagues and participants, good evening and a very warm welcome to UNISA on this fairly crisp evening. I know it's the graveyard shift, but I'll try to be as quick as possible so we can all journey home. Um, UNISA is widely acknowledged as being the pioneer in the development of piano competitions in South Africa and across the African continent since the introduction of our very first piano competition in 1982 our competitions have steadily grown in both prestige and stature today our piano competition is ranked amongst the very best piano competitions in the world through our dedicated efforts to maintain fairness, integrity, and the highest possible standards, we have earned the respect of our contemporaries, both nationally and internationally. In 2015, our fifth UNISA National Piano Competition, we made a foray into parallel jazz and classical categories. It was also the year in which the winners of both the jazz and classical categories were individuals of color, a first for UNISA and well-deserved acknowledgement of our transformation efforts. It must be stressed that, it must be stressed though that the winners of the 2015 National Piano Competition were chosen purely on merit. However, our efforts to be included, inclusive of jazz afforded many South Africans of color the opportunity to participate in our national piano competition. I'm very pleased to see Dr. Megan Jeffrey Prince, who won the classical category in 2015, is serving on the jury of this edition of the competition. He's joined by Dr. Ben Skuman, who was the very first South African ever to win one of our international piano competitions. It is indeed a remarkable event moment when UNISA is able to invite two former winners to serve on the jury of this competition. I'm sure we'll be inviting the winners of tonight as well at some time in the future. Over the past two weeks, we have witnessed some of the best young South African jazz and classical pianists grace this stage of, the hall, of this hall. Without a doubt, the quality and level of performance has been unprecedented in our competitions. I was truly moved tonight to see the passion with which you engaged and indulged with the piano, and both, both the classical and the jazz categories. This is a testament to the quality of the teaching that is taking place across this country and the determination of our young artists to strive for the highest possible performance levels. It is unequivocal that we are on par, if not better, than international counterparts. 
I am truly excited at the prospect of hearing the finalists from this competition compete alongside international pianists who will be invited to the 14th International Piano Competition in 2020. To our winners, congratulations on your sublime achievement. You have joined a prestigious list of past winners whose careers took flight after winning one of our competitions. You have demonstrated without a doubt that you have the skills, the maturity and the tenacity to stand out above your fellow competitors. Clearly you have impressed the jury and left an indelible mark on the audience, your teachers and family. I applaud you and I encourage you to accept and enjoy the praise and the recognition that has been bestowed on you. To those individuals that did not win, I will cry with you. It must be really painful because I could see the fervor with which you pursued your performance tonight. The passion was palpable. Go home knowing that you tried your very best and you're still a winner. And I would just like to share with you this quote, success is not final, failure is not fateful. It is the courage to continue that counts. Those are not my words, but the words of a famous Winston Churchill. To all participants who had the courage to enter this competition, thank you for making the effort to participate and share your talents. We are very proud of you as young South African artists and wish you well as you embark on a long and dedicated journey to take your places on the world stages as South African performers. To our esteemed classical and jazz jury members, my sincere thanks go to you for sharing your expertise and mentoring our young performers, including our shadow jury. We are grateful to everyone who was involved in this competition from our conductor maestro Richard Cook, the Johannesburg Festival Orchestra and Rhythm Section with Amashi Kechi and Rob Watson, to our highly skilled UNISA staff from sound and video, UNISA States, the UNISA Music Foundation, UNISA Print Production, and UNISA Institutional Advancement. We are indeed fortunate at UNISA to have such talented individuals who can make events such as these a resounding success. Finally, to all of you who have stayed for the very final lap, and for all of you who have attended this competition, thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting our artists over the past week. Your presence has ensured that this competition was a resounding success. I encourage you to mark your calendars once again as our international piano competition is scheduled to take place from 20 January until 1 February. Going by past records, we expect to invite approximately 30 world-class performers from over 20 different countries. I sincerely hope that you will all be able to attend. Finally, I am known as the transient registrar at UNESA. I come and I go. That is why some people cannot remember when I started. I started in July, Professor Karendra Debrup. <laughs> it's been a year. <laughs> it's been a year, but it's been an exciting year, and I'm so privileged to be associated with these kinds of events and with this august university and the great people that it produces. Travel safely this evening and do come back to us. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Glam. I'm sure you want to hear from our winners. So before you depart, a quick word from our two winners. Willem de Beer and Lizanti van Sittert. Um, and Tabiso Mfana. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I started piano it when I was in the second grade. And um, by the end of that year, I found myself in a little church in Bethlehem with a very scary looking and uh, 
yeah, old man who turned out to be a UNISA examiner taking my first pre-grade one UNISA exam. And I went through all the exams, did up to grade eight, did my performance assessment on the stage, and it's been an incredible journey. This is my third national piano competition. Um, and what it's taught me is that it's really such a journey of thankfulness because I could never stand here this evening taking pride in, in everything I've done alone because it's, there's so many people that stand behind us. Um, my wife and my family, my parents who enabled me to study the piano, my teachers um, who I'd like to mention, you're from Beulah van Aswegen from Bethlehem, uh, Ashan Peres, who I then studied with, and then Dr. Brian Wallach, Professor Joseph Stanford, and my current teacher, Professor Antonell. These people have done incredible work and have so inspired me uh, to inspire the generation that I get to teach. And um, I always regard music as, as being a reflection of the society in which it is created. And it is thanks to the society in which I was created that I'm able to to reflect some of it and really share this gift that is music. So I would like to thank you, Nisa, and all the people who stand behind us. We look like solitary people, but in fact, there are armies behind us who enable us to do what we do. So thank you very much. I am genuinely speechless, so this is going to be quite short. I'd like to start by thanking my fellow competitors. You know, this was a competition between four friends, really. And they certainly pushed me to the limit, I must say. So big ups to them. I'd like to thank Eunice for the opportunity. I feel like, in a sense, my career has properly begun today. So thank you. One more time, folks. A round of applause for our two winners, Tabiso Mfana, Willem de Beer. Thank you so much, folks. That brings to a close our award ceremony. I'm going to ask the parents, teachers, and fans to just hold off coming up the stage. We just want to take a few pictures with the jury and the winners, and then you may shower your congratulations upon the candidates. Thank you.